Welcome to episode 4. Today we've got Mothra vs. Godzilla. We are fresh off the momentum of King Kong vs. Godzilla. So the thing is now, where is the road? Where do we go from here and keep the momentum rolling from here? So, do we go ahead and do we make a sequel to King Kong vs. Godzilla? Well, here's the thing. That was kind of supposed to happen. What are we titled? The continuation. King Kong vs. Godzilla. That's what it would have been. Would have came out probably in like 1963 or 64. Either way, it never happened. It fell through the cracks. And yeah, that would be the story of King Kong Godzilla for about the next uh, 60 years, basically, until the 2021 movie came out. Uh, and there is another movie that did fall through the cracks, and we'll talk about that more. But right now, we're still in a time period before all that happens, so we'll cross that road eventually. Okay, so with Kong out of the picture, we gotta go ahead and get somebody big in there. How about we get uh, Gorgo? That sounds like a classic monster. Gorgo vs. Godzilla. No, that's not happening. Alright, so what about the beast from 20,000 Fathoms? Or what about the Claw? Those are not happening either, okay? Gamera. Gamera seems like a must. We've got to have Gamera meet Godzilla. Well, as cool as that sounds, and as much as we wanted it, the issue is Gamera didn't exist by this point. We're still a year shy. And we've had our own issues getting Gamera and Godzilla to cross over in the movie. It just seems to never want to actually happen, and it's one of those ideas that we just kind of hold out for and cross our fingers that maybe someday there'll be an agreement that'll be met and they will actually face off and we'll get that big movie on screen. Alright, so Mothra, talking about her. Mothra was one of the many kaiju that Toho had kind of made movies about and um, she was just one of the key ones that they had made a movie about and they just slowly just kind of pushed it into the Godzilla movies and the universe. And this is pretty cool, this whole cinematic universe idea because way before, you know, Marvel and Disney were doing it, technically, Toho did it first. And of course, you know, DC and uh, Legendary would do it, you know, with the Monsterverse, adopt the idea. I just don't feel like uh, Toho gets the uh, credit they deserve, though, for what they created, though, way before it was a big thing like it is nowadays. Looking at Mothra herself in this movie, it is very apples to oranges when you look at her and King Kong. So in the last movie, King Kong, when he faced Godzilla, obviously he had his strength, he had his intelligence, and of course he was a bit more, uh, his height was on par with Godzilla. So, you know, it was a bit more of an even battle. Then you got Mothra, who really just lacks any actual real powers. At least this incarnation. I mean, she has her little yellow powder, but let's be honest, though. We're not talking like laser beams or electricity. Nothing too crazy, you know, that uh, she does have her hurricane force wings, but really, though, she's still a big underdog against the grain completely facing a pissed off Godzilla. Overall, though, as a viewer, you kind of feel bad for Mothra due to the fact that she really doesn't stand much of a chance. You know, chances are she's just going in a battle to die, but she stands a better chance than humanity does with the military. So, there is that. Here's the thing about this movie. Some of the anti-nuclear messages are kind of a bit more present in this movie. Yes, they were there in the last two movies, but the thing is, they kind of felt like they were a bit more in the background. And then for that, on this movie, you also have another layer that kind of adds an extra element to it, because it kind of has, dare I say, an anti-capitalism message. And basically, what I'm trying to say is in this movie, basically, we have a giant egg that's displaced. It washes ashore. Villagers kind of take it in. And it is basically sold to this giant evil corporation. And their whole plan, basically, is to make more money off it, you know? Make it as an attraction. You know, people can watch it incubate and see whatever hatches out, you know, just make more money off it, you know, whatever they paid for it. Twins show up and twins are trying to say, hey, could you please return the egg? You know, we kind of need it back, you know? Um, that'd be nice, you know? Plus, uh, if you don't, maybe there'll be consequences, you know, you'll be felt. What? Well, they're like, hey, capture them, you know? And once the twins get away, eventually, uh, they meet them again, and they try to talk more sense in these businessmen, but these guys don't care, they only care about the money. And their whole idea is, hey, how much will you sell the twins for? How about one twin, you know? They just want to buy them so they can make more profit off them. It doesn't take long for Godzilla to show up, and when he does, I just want to say that Godzilla has one of the coolest entries I've seen in this entire series, at least in the show era. So here's the thing, he emerges from the dirt. The last movie we saw him emerge from the ice, but this one... There's no real reason why he's in the dirt or under the ground in the first place, but I'm not questioning it because of the fact that I love seeing that scene where the ground is just moving, people are losing it out of the terror scene that Godzilla has emerged, the radiation levels are high, and Godzilla just shows up and wrecks everything. Let's stop and talk about the Godzilla suit too in this movie. This is probably one of the better slimmer Godzillas. Um, I will say it's not better in my opinion than the 62 design, but for this work, it's very iconic in its own right. It has those evil iconic eyebrows that just look purely menacing and pissed off. This is actually the last evil incarnation of Godzilla we're going to have for a while. Uh, the 62 suit isn't totally uh, absent from the movie due to the fact it was used for a lot of stills 
And also, it does seem like they did use it for the scene where he falls into the water after his defeat. I think this movie is effectively the point where you just notice the military shows up just to piss off Godzilla because they really don't do a damn every time they show up. But you know what? You kind of expect it and you accept it also. Because can you really have a Godzilla movie where he doesn't fight the military because it just feels kind of wrong. You know, you just expect him to show up and just buy the people time and just see those cool scenes where the military just tries, you know. It takes some time, but the twins and the natives are convinced to allow Mothra to go into battle. And yeah, they're not exactly too keen to help us out due to the fact of how we've treated the planet, you know, obviously with our nuclear testing and all our wrongdoings that we've done, and they're basically like, yeah, that's not our problem, but they allow her to go in, and Mothra puts up a good battle, but the thing is, it's just not enough, though. And this kills off Japan's last line of defense, you know, as they suffer. And uh, eventually everything, you know, crosses the line, you know, when Godzilla just heads for the children, you know, that becomes a big issue, and you know, what now? You know, hopefully he can be stopped. So Godzilla now has the children in his pathway. This is probably unintentionally. Godzilla just wreaking havoc wherever he does. But Double Trouble shows up and saves the day because guess what? That egg hatches and reveals that we've got two more Mothra. Mothra are on their way to stop Godzilla and they end up succeeding. And for Godzilla, this is a little humiliating likely due to the fact that imagine defeating another kaiju just to get beat by some newborns. Ouch, that's gotta suck. Anytime I look at this movie, I look at this end of its own era. Yes, it is still very much part of the show era. However, though, this is part of the change for Godzilla because from here, we're going to see a whole new character and a face clip that he's going to get in his personality. So this is the last time, effectively, we're going to see him as the bad guy. There's going to be a lot of changes coming about. I think, honestly, when I watch this movie nowadays, the perception of this movie is very different when I was a kid. I didn't really notice certain things when I was a kid, you know. I probably wouldn't have noticed the little anti-capitalism message that it kind of has, you know, or, or just touching on the subject in general, I should say. Obviously, when I was a kid, I just showed up to watch, you know, the monsters and the kaiju battle it out, you know, and uh, cheering on Godzilla. But it's interesting to see how these movies evolve and, you know, the things that you notice as an adult in this movie is probably one of the better that's executed much better in the Showa era. Um, I do want to say, as much as I praise King Kong vs. Godzilla, this movie is actually better and takes it up a notch. And then you got the soundtrack, which is extremely memorable in its own right. This is probably one of my favorite soundtracks in the entire Godzilla series. Um, it just really adds that extra element and brings everything to life. And that's one thing I always look for in these movies. I always look for memorable soundtracks that just, I listen to it and I just remember the feeling and the vibe of watching that one scene of what made it so great. And the soundtrack is definitely one of those things that adds the little extra on the top that makes it even more beautiful when you watch these movies. I think one of the beauties too about this movie also is the fact that they didn't probably realize at this point what they were building, you know, something amazing was in the works and they probably didn't even realize it, you know, I don't know how many people seriously created these movies, put all that time and effort and crap to them and thought, you know what, where will this series be in 60 years because it is definitely on another level and this was just part of the strong sturdy foundation. There's still more to come, you know, we still gotta get Rodan into the mix. We still gotta meet Godzilla's greatest enemy, King Ghidorah, who will be part of the next movie. So get ready for that, because we're about ready to get in there and meet the big four all in one movie. Thank you for watching.